If you're tired of using the same old and boring gradients in your designs and would like to create stunning and unique effects that will make your design stand out, well, you're in luck because today I'm going to show you a really simple yet very effective way to create your own unique mesh gradients and bring them to life with some really simple animation techniques. Let's jump right in. First off, we need to start by creating our mesh gradient. So let's open up Figma, start a new file, and let's start by creating a desktop frame. So let's click F and go for our default desktop frame 1440 by 1024. We'll start by adding a number of different shapes. And these shapes could be regular circles, rectangles, or stars, or even custom shapes created with your pen tool. But for this example, we're gonna go simple and use just a regular shape tool to create our gradient. So let's start by adding a rectangle here and uh, maybe an ellipse. Let's duplicate the ellipse, make it larger. Um, we can also add a polygon just to spice things up. And let's add a star like that. And let's also just for good measure and balance, let's duplicate this polygon, make it bigger and we can rotate it because why not? The more shapes you add and the more you make them different, the more interesting your mesh gradient could look like in the end. And that's the thing you will have to test by yourself and you'll get to know that uh, in just a second when I show you uh, how we're going to approach this. So we'll get back to the fun part later. Now that we have these shapes created on our frame, let's start to fill them up with different colors. And we need to choose really saturated colors for them because once we go to the next step, you'll see that they will lose some saturation in the process. For now, let's just find a blend of colors that we like. So let's go, let's say that we want to go with this orange color, select this uh, polygon, click I, and then pick the color and just change the color by sliding on this Q line here. So let's go for blue, let's pick the color from this blue and then the cha change the fill to something, let's say purple. We might wanna go for something like magenta, go for something like this. Now we can move this circle to that part because it's a bit empty here. Now let's uh, find the fill and change it to, let's say, to dark blue. Okay. And now we'll be adding a very high amount of blur to soften up the edges and create a smooth transition between uh, these different colors and shapes. So let's select them all, go to the effects tab and select the layer blur from the dropdown. Let me just move it over here just so we're seeing uh, the changes. And as I change the values here, you will see that our mesh gradient is already taking shape. So let's uh, choose something really, really uh, blurred just so transition is really smooth right now. And that's the part where you can now go into your shapes, change their size, maybe rotate them a little bit, and then play around with the color to see if you can find something uh, more suitable for what, whatever you are looking for. And then also you can change the opacity of those shapes by just clicking numbers on your keyboard. Uh, so let's say we want to change this ellipse to 30% to opacity, we'll just click three or um, eight for 80%. But let's go back to 30 and uh, maybe we also want to change the opacity of this yellow because it's standing out too much uh, now that I'm looking at it. And we could stop at this point because we already have a mesh gradient created. Just go over here to the flatten selection and then flatten your gradient set just so it's one uh, shape, uh, but it will pick the lowest opacity of the layer uh, from the group. So be mindful of that when you're flattening your vector. So let's enter this action by clicking Command and Z and we'll do it by hand. Select it all and uh, click Option Command and G to create a new frame and we can call this frame Mesh Gradient. And just make sure that your content is not clipping because we need it to overlap the, uh, the content. There's one more thing we can do at this point and we can add some more texture to our Mesh Gradients and for that we'll just need to use a Noise plugin. So let's select our shapes and right click on the canvas and go to the plugins menu. And from the plugins, click on the find more plugins and just type in noise. Let's go for this one. So let's click on the noise plugin and let's customize the setting a little bit. So for that, we will need to zoom in and see the changes. Reduce the amount just so it's not too, uh, too strong. We can also reduce the opacity just a little bit 
and you're able to change the color if you want to. By default, we'll just, uh, it would just make it dark. Click on the Add to Layer. Actually, let's, uh, let's make it white because it's a bit too strong. Now that when I zoom in, you will see a nice, a really nice slide uh, texture added to our gradient, which is exactly what we're looking for. All right, so the mesh part is now done. Let's uh, next up, let's create our rotating mesh animation. What we're going to do right now is we'll just select the uh, desktop one and duplicate it, rotate our shape. Actually, you know what? Maybe let's just make it a little bit, a uh, little bit smaller. So let's hit K on our, on our keyboard to access the scale tool and let's let's reduce uh, the size of our mesh gradient by 30 percent and let's place it in the middle because we don't want to make it uh, too big. Okay, let's, let me do it one more time. So select this desktop frame, duplicate it by clicking Option and Shift, rotate it, and then position it in any uh, position you want, and then duplicate it one more time, rotate it again, and then place it, let's say here, and then one more time, duplicate it, rotate it, uh, position it, well, right around the middle. Select all of these frames, remove the fill, and make sure we are not clipping the content. And you'll see that our noise is blending out and then creating this uh, frame around our selection. For this, you will need to change the opacity to a really low amount and make sure that fill behind your mesh gradient is matching the uh, color of the noise that we added on the mesh. Let's select these frames all at once and then go over to create a component set because this will save us some time and some space because Right now, once we have this component, we can use just one component and then animate this and reuse the same component all across our designs and be able to edit it once and all the changes will cascade down uh, to all of the components that we are re reusing on our designs. Click over to the prototype mode and start connecting all the frames. And for this, we will need to change the trigger from on click to after delay. Let's change it to one millisecond because we don't want any pauses or stops. And let's change the animation to smart animate and the animation effect to linear and let's make it a little more than a second so let's let's say 1200 milliseconds connect the second one with the third one or we'll change the after delay to one millisecond do the same uh, for the third one and lastly let's connect it back to the first frame because we want a looping motion and also after delay one millisecond linear uh, 1200 milliseconds you can modify this uh, value to your liking if, if you want your mesh gradient to spin slower or faster and all we need right now is a final design so let me grab one from the files that i have sitting on my desktop okay now we have our hero design let's select our component and click command and c select our hero section command and v place it all the way behind so option command and square bracket to move it all the way down and now we can reduce the opacity just a little bit maybe to 50 percent or 60 percent and make sure it's positioned in the place that you want it to be placed in finally let's play out the prototype and see our mesh gradient in action and there you have it guys, our mesh gradient is complete and it's looking perfect. Now we can use it as a background or add it to other elements on our designs and make them pop a little bit more, which is what our clients are exactly looking for in our designs. So before we wrap it up, I just wanted to let you know that there's a free Figma file with this exact design and this exact animation included in the description of this video. So grab it and have a play around yourself and see if you can recreate the same uh, animation yourself. Okay guys, that's it for today's tutorial on creating and animating mesh gradients in Figma. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more design content and tutorials. Stay curious, stay creative guys. This was your agent and I'll see you very, very soon.